Burn on my soul and all that is within me. Bless Holy Bless name. Amen. 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 Bless you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you, yes. Lord. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them to dream. Our mouth was filled with laughter. Our tongues are singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. So in tears will weep in joy. And he that goes forth weeping will see. Will doubtless return again. Amen. Bring the sheep. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We talk about the times, you know, it's just sort of a refresher, you know. And maybe 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 just a a little bit of a a refresher. You know, some of you that are watching at home, we appreciate you joining us, by the way. Some of you that are watching at home, some of you that are here, you know, you may have, have come, grown up in, in the Pentecost or um, in, the, uh, in the Pentecostal way and charismatic way. And, uh, but I didn't, you know, I, I went to a, a Presbyterian church, a Baptist church. Excuse me, thank you. I went to a different denominational churches and so forth, and yes. and um, and you know there were a lot of people that would talk about those people. You know, <laughs> you belong to one of those churches. Yeah, I went to one of those, those churches, <laughs> and particularly in, in the, my latter uh, high school years, um, Kathy Coleman was very popular, and uh, she would be on television, and. Uh, and that was something that really made people uh, uh, talk about. You know, I mean, she was, you know, she, if she was a woman. Uh, she was, she dressed, you know, flamboyantly, and uh, she spoke in tongues, and you know, was unashamed about it, you know. And uh, uh, so it, it wasn't until uh, uh, I, I, uh, this friend of mine invited me to go to a, a small uh, charismatic church, and. Um, And so I went, you know, and the people were nice. It was a, it was a, it was a small place, and the people were, uh, it was a, it was a not a prosperous place by any stretch of the imagination, but the people were exceptionally nice, you know. And the first uh, Sunday that I was there, somebody got up and and they gave a tongue, you know, and somebody over on this side of the church got up and gave the interpretation, and it actually happened a couple of different times. You know, I thought, wow, you know, that it didn't sound as nutty as I thought it would, <laughs> it was supposed to sound, you know. And, um, um, and, and, and so that was sort of my introduction to, you know, uh, people actually uh, uh, speaking, somebody actually speaking in tongues. And they did, they would speak in tongues in the service there. And so after a, a couple of meetings, I, there was a guy that I, I knew there who, who was, um, I'd gone to high school, but, and uh, he seemed to, you know, he was sort of, uh, you know, obviously a regular there and knew what he was doing, knew his way around the, the uh, things that God himself thought, anyway. And so I asked him if he would spend some time discipling me. And uh, he said uh, he said that he, he would if I would, I was a, I'm a CPA, and uh, he said he really needed some help with his finances. And if I would, you know, counsel him on his finances, he would help me with the uh, the things of, uh, of God. And so after a, a couple of weeks of uh, meeting with him and, and talking with him, he, he said uh, that the Lord had spoken to him that I needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit and that I, I didn't have the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, I just said, hey, listen, I, I don't know that it's something I really need, you know. I mean, I'm not necessarily opposed to it, but, but I don't know that it's something I need or feel strongly a, 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 a necessity for it. <laughs> and so he said, well, listen, let's just, why don't we just, you know, we'll, we'll do this. We'll let the Lord decide if, if you need it or not. We'll let the sort of Lord decide whether he's going to give it to you or not. And uh, let's just begin to pray and we'll uh, um, see what happens, you know. And so, so that's what we did. And uh, so we began to pray. And, you know, after about 10 minutes or so, uh, all of a sudden, my Lord, it was like a lightning bolt hit the room, you know. And it was boom. And uh, the room was just filled with the presence of God. And I began babbling at times. I was just babbling on and on and on, you know. And uh, it was.
was, of course, a very strange and unusual experience. But what was so extraordinary about it was that all of a sudden, I began to sense the presence of God in a way that just, it was, it was not like anything that I had ever, ever sensed before, you know, the, the presence of God, and a closeness to God, and a, a closeness to Him, and the things of the Spirit, and it was just, so that's basically, we prayed on in the Spirit for an hour or so, and uh, it was really, it was quite an experience, you know. I knew nothing about tongues. I knew, and, and I, I don't know how much he knew either, you know. But uh, anyway, I, I didn't really know anything about it. But we prayed on for a while. And what, what happened was there was this incredible sense of the presence of God, you know, uh, as we were, uh, were, were praying in tongues. And so, anyway, it got late, so I, I, I went home. And I didn't really want to go to bed, you know, because I, I mean, I've been in the presence of God for, for a few hours. And I thought, gosh, you know, I, uh, I don't want this to end, you know. I don't, I don't, want, I don't really want to go. So, I, you know, I, I, until I just couldn't stay awake anymore, you know, I continued to uh, pray in tongues. And so I, I fell asleep. I woke up the next morning, and uh, no, I would normally go out for a little bit in the morning anyway and spend some time praying and doing whatever, you know. So I hit out the next morning, and it's like the Holy Spirit is there waiting. You know, I mean, it just, it was, it was, it was, I mean, I, I sensed the presence of God sitting there waiting for me, you know, and uh, so, uh, so I, I began to uh, pray in tongues again, and um, all of a sudden what happened was, it's, it's, I, I'm, I'm sensing the anointing of the presence of God. And, uh, and a strong, strong, powerful presence of the uh, uh, of God. And um, it was just, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was just fantastic. So it continued on, and uh, I just uh, really had uh, uh, it was, it was just such an extraordinary thing, you know. And I could ask the Holy Spirit anything, and He, you know, give me the answer. And you know, I, I asked Him about a couple of things, and I said. You know, what's, what's the biblical support for that? You know, he quote the verse. Here it was. So it was really, it was such, a, such an extraordinary time. And so what happened over about the period of the first, I don't know, week, 10 days or so, um, when I would go out to pray, I would, I would have to start praying in tongues. You know, I would have to start it. And uh, but after a few minutes, you know, I could feel it come on, you know, the presence of God, and then I'd, and then it really wasn't me praying anymore. It was the Holy Spirit praying through me. Yes. And, uh, and I could sense when he took over. I could sense when he. And the same thing happened really when we, in, in, when we began uh, in the ministry, when the Lord spoke to us to, to go into the ministry. Um, what would happen is, is, is it wouldn't be maybe a couple of minutes into speaking. And as long as you were speaking on what the Holy Spirit wanted you to speak, all of a sudden, the presence of God would just come over you, and you could sense it, it would just fall over you like a blanket, yes. you know? And the same thing would happen in prayer. Well, it wasn't very long before that didn't happen anymore in, uh, in, in, in prayer, you know? And uh, so, I'm, you know, I'm praying about it. I said, Lord, I, you know, I, I don't sense the, the same anointing. I don't sense the, the presence. And the Lord said, you know, if you have to feel my presence, then it's not, there's no faith involved. It's not my faith. And everything that he does is by faith. Amen. And so he said, if you have to sense the presence, right. it's not by faith. And he said, what you've got to do is, he says, you've got to, when you come to me in prayer, even if you're praying in tongues, you've got to know Amen. that I'm there. Amen. You've got to know that it's, that it's going to happen. Amen. And if you feel it, if you don't feel it, you know, you you got to know that, it, that, 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 that I'm there. And then that's part, and that's what faith is all about. The same way with with beginning to minister, you know, from the gospel that for a, a fairly limited period of time, I could actually feel it, I could see it, you know, you could you could see when it uh, took over. But then it didn't happen that way anymore. And once again, it was just, the Lord said it was the same thing. It has to be by faith, you know. And uh, because everything God does, but see, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And the praying in tongues and the operation of the gift of tongues, they are by faith. And, uh, and so, and, and 
if faith is not involved, then it's a fruitless effort, and you're sort of uh, wasting your uh, uh, wasting your time. Now, first Corinthians, let's look at First Corinthians twelve, and uh, follow after love and desire spiritual gifts rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him, howbeit in the spirit he speaks mysteries. That is a remarkable statement there. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. No man understands him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. So there's two things in particular, particular words that are going on there. One of them is you're talking to God. And uh, I will tell you that, that people don't have the solution to your problem. That's right. People, <laughs> they, they don't even have a roadmap to help you get to the end. Huh. You know, people, mo most people are more lost than you are, you know. And so the, the reality is that you need to talk to God. Yeah. And yeah. when you're speaking, in, and it's not that you're not talking to God in your regular language. But this is a special, special opportunity here, you know, to be able to communicate with God in in a different way. More importantly, howbeit in the Spirit He speaketh mysteries. Howbeit in the Spirit He speaketh mysteries. Now, when um, Amen. the Amen. you know from that point on, I went to Pentecostal churches. I didn't never go to a, a denominational church again, and. Uh, and at one of the churches that, that Gail and I went to was a very large church. And we would teach the new believers class. And one of the things was to teach them about tongues, you know, to get them baptized in the, in the Holy Spirit. And the, the church, uh, that particular church, was very big on uh, getting people baptized in the Holy Spirit. They, they knew it was important. They believed it was important. They wanted all their people to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And if you wanted to join the church, you had to go through the New yeah. Believers class. And one of the sessions, the sessions was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And, um, and, and to help you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But they didn't really do much in the way of teaching. What do you use it for? Right. You know, what's, what's the purpose of speaking in tongues? What is the value of speaking right. in tongues? Right. They, they wanted you to have it. They knew you should have it. It was important to them to have it. But they didn't really understand the use of tongues. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was a wonderful place. And, you know, we were there for a number of years. And, and it was really a wonderful place. But we were sort of on our own, you know, in, in figuring out what was what was going on with the, the tongues thing. And uh, Pastor Gail and I, uh, before we got married, we knew each other. We went to the same church for a while. And... Uh, and, and we both had the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and uh, so when we you know got married, we were we were like-minded, you know, Holy Spirit filled right. believers, right. and uh, so we we knew that there was more to it, you know, just by the Spirit of God. We right. knew was, there was really more to it than was was being tossed. There was more to it than we were receiving. So yes. over the years, we've set about trying to. Uh, to determine what, what, what's the purpose of it. Now, in uh, Acts chapter 1, Jesus, in speaking to his disciples, he said, you know, wait, you know, don't go out, but wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father, which as you heard of me, you heard me talk about, actually, let me, let me read. He makes a statement in there that's uh, he says, uh, being assembled together with them, Jesus commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, You have heard of me. For Jesus, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You should be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, it's important to, to, to know that, uh, and, and I don't want to really spend a lot of time on this, but 
And it's important to know that uh, when you got born again, you got the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came to dwell on the inside of you. You didn't have the baptism at that point, but you did have the Holy Spirit dwell on the, on the inside of you. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is an event subsequent to salvation where uh, what happened is the disciples were all born again here at this point. When Jesus is having this conversation with them, they're all born again, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says to, 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 to them, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. So that's a, a clear indication that one of the most important things that you ought to be getting is power. Is, is, is the power of God. And what, what kind of power? What, what's the, what's the, 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 the power? Well, the, the Holy Ghost is the action element of God to bring the Word of God to pass or to, or to put it this way, to put power, uh, put action to the power that's in the Word. I mean, the Word, the word of God is the power of God. But it's the Holy Spirit who actually puts the action to it. It's the Holy Spirit who actually makes it, uh, makes that, makes that power work. So uh, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit to have the power of God working uh, for you. I, I don't know how much I we really heard people talk about that. You know, it just wasn't something that that uh, people really talked about. But we we recognized that that was something that was really important. That if God said there was power there, we wanted that power. We we, we needed that power. So we really, we began to ex really explore the the uh, use of tongues and, and the gift of tongues and and uh, so. But particularly these uh, passages right here: He that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men but unto God. Now, personally, what I do when I am praying in tongues, I'll quote that verse. I'll speak that verse. I'll get it out there because, I, you know, it's reminding me as much as it's reminding the Holy Spirit that I'm speaking to God. I'm not speaking to people, you know. And so if I'm speaking in tongues, I, I, it, it's purposeful. It, it's intentional. I'm intending to speak to God. It also says down there in verse 13, it says, let him that speak in an unknown tongue also pray that he may interpret. Now, I can't say that I always get the interpretation, you know, of, of, of what I'm, I'm praying about. But um, um, I get it often enough that it's worth asking for, <laughs> you know. And uh, so to, to, to pray in an unknown tongue is an avenue to speak to God. Right. It's an avenue to communicate with God is not like your natural conversation. And it's also something that's shielded from the devil, that the devil can't understand what you're saying. Because you're not speaking to men, you're speaking unto God. And God's intention was that that language would be something that the devil didn't understand, that you could yes. communicate to, to God. It was your unique language, your unique gift that God gave you, that you could speak to him and uh, concerning the things that you wanted to speak. Amen. And you could speak about mysteries. You could ask for mysteries. You could ask for mysteries. Now, the, a mystery, the Greek word, that comes from the Greek word mysterion, which means something that was hidden to be revealed. In other words, it wasn't hidden from you, it was hidden for you. Amen. It was something hidden back. Amen. And the key to unlock the things that are hidden for you Amen. is time. Is 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 is, uh, is, is being in time, and uh, uh, it says he that prophesies speaketh unto men for edification, exhortation, and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Edifies himself. You know, every human being is subject to the blues and the balls. I mean, everybody gets a little down from time to time, and to edify means to pick up, to build up, and. Praying in tongues, you can edify yourself. You can pick yourself up. And uh, I, th there are only two ways, I think, really, to, uh, uh, if you're really down in the dumps, you know, and you, you, you need to pick yourself up, they're really the only two ways that I know to do it. One of them is worship, you know, to just begin to worship. You, you can't worship for any length of time and re remain down in the dumps. Similarly, by praying in tongues, you edify yourself. You pull yourself up. 
even if you don't know what you, uh, uh, even if you don't know necessarily what you're, you're uh, uh, praying about. So those are those those are key things, but. How be it in the spirit, he speaks of mysteries. How be it in the spirit, he speaks of mysteries. Wouldn't you like to know all the mysteries over your life? I mean, would you? Or if God has something laid up for you, let's say it that way. What if God has something laid up for you? There's two things you'd like. Number one, you'd like to have it. And number two, you'd like to know what it is. Right? If you don't know what it is, it's going to be hard to know when you got it. And uh, so, so. Tongues represents a vehicle that God gave us to pray about mysteries. Now, there's all kinds of mysteries that can be mysteries of healing, mysteries of provision, mysteries of relationships, mysteries of, of there is so much contained in tongues and in your ability to communicate with God, your ability to call in the mysteries. See, the, the biblical principle of calling forth those things that be not as though they are. It's not just a natural principle. It's a spirit, it is a spiritual principle. And so if they're, they're, you can call forth those things that be not as though they are in tongues, not necessarily even know what it is that you're calling forth right that minute. It's just that God has mysteries laid back for you. And they're good mysteries and you want them. I mean, if God has something laid back for you, you want those, those mysteries. And to be able to pray in tongues gives you a, 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 a access to that mystery based on what the Bible actually says. So it's a key, it's a, it's a key, key thing. And uh, just looking a little further down in this uh, in this passage here, Paul says, I, "I would that you all spoke with tongues, but rather that you prophesied. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh in tongues, except the interpret." that the church may receive edifying. You know, you can interpret your individual tongue as well. Actually, we just read that, that, you know, we're supposed to, we have the ability to pray that he may interpret. So the the praying in tongues, it's a source to the mysteries. It's a source to call forth those things that be not as though they are in the, in, in the realm of the mysteries. Um, it's a source to be able to edify yourself. It's a source to be able to discover the the uh, unknown. Um, it's a, it's a it's an extraordinary uh, thought. Now we'll just let's look at a couple of the scriptures and we'll come to, back to that. But uh, I, once again, in Acts it said, "You shall see power when you receive that baptism." Let's look at Romans eight twenty six. Actually, Romans uh, chapter 8. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll jump around in here. First of all, verse 14. It says, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Hallelujah. So we want to be led by the Spirit. Verse 16, it says, The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we're children of God. Then over with a verse, and skip over to a verse uh, 26. Um, Likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the, the will of God. So now this is a little different matter here he's talking about than what we just read uh, in, in, in Corinthians. He's talking about the Spirit making intercession for you. Talking about the Spirit making intercession Amen. for you. See, everything we're talking about here works by faith. And if, you're, if you don't have your faith on it, then it won't work for you. But to have your faith engaged, that when you pray in tongues, he's helping your infirmities. He's helping your weaknesses, whatever those weaknesses might have to be. Maybe it's illness, maybe it's financial lack, maybe it's relational lack, maybe it's just depression or, 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 or those kinds of things. But whatever it is, yes. you can release your faith and believe God 
that the Spirit is making intercession yes. for you before God when you, you, you pray. The Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Yes. And he that searches the heart through the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saints. Yes. So when you pray in tongues, particularly if you give yourself over to praying through the Spirit, or believe God that the Spirit of God is praying through you. See, that's the highest expression of tongues anyway. It's not you speaking in the language, but the Spirit of God praying through you, yes. praying through through you in life. And it's, once again, it's all done by faith. You know, that's what I'm believing God for, is that the Spirit is going to pray through you. I don't know uh, what I even need to pray for. But I believe that God will make intercession for me, that the Holy Spirit will make intercession for me to bring to pass the things that I'm believing for. So if I release my faith for that, that when I pray in tongues, that the Spirit is going to begin to pray through me. What's going to happen is all of a sudden the Spirit will begin to make intercession for me. Yes. And, uh, and He will help my Amen. infirmities, whatever those uh, infirmities happen to be. You know, I, 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 there are things that you can't handle. There are things you can't solve. There are problems you can't fix, you know. But there's nothing that the Holy Spirit can't fix. There's nothing yes. the Holy Spirit can't deal with. There, there's, there's, there's issues... The, of, of healing, for example, that, you know, people can't do. But the Holy Spirit can heal anything. Yes. And, but sometimes you just, you got to know what it is, and you got to pray and have the Spirit intercede for you. Have the Spirit intercede for you. Oh, hallelujah. That's a powerful word. The Spirit helps our infirmities for we know not what you will pray for as we are. But the Spirit itself makes intercession for us yes. in the which cannot be out. Uh, now, we won't turn back there, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it says, He that, uh, that, that, that uh, speaks in an unknown tongue gives thanks well. That's a fascinating uh, uh, verse because I, one of the key things, if you believe God to do things for you, God needs to see a thankful heart in you. He must see a thankful heart. And you can give thanksgiving, you can give thanks and praise in tongues. And it's what he's saying is that's doing it well. That's doing it in a little bit different level, a different way. So for me, anytime that I'm worshiping, I try to break over into tongues because I want to give praise well. I want to give thanks well. Anytime, anytime I'm praying through a, a, you know, thanks, a thanksgiving part of prayer, I always go to tongues there because I want to give thanks well. And uh, see, what, what happens is people don't really, they don't really believe the Bible. They don't, they don't believe what the Bible says. If the Bible says that the Spirit will intercede for you, then the Spirit will intercede for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. So it's a, 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 just a, a, a key, key thing. One of the things, I, 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 I encourage you to do this. You know, you, you've heard us talk about uh, and I'm, uh, I'm assuming that everybody who's watching here is uh, uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit, has baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's probably a pretty good guess. If if you have it, all you got to do is ask for it. You know, He wants you to have it more than you want to have it because it's the way He speaks to you, it's the way He leads you, it's the way He guides you. And uh, and so if you don't have the baptism in the Holy Spirit, just ask for it. And, and it's really that simple. You, you ask for it, you believe God for it, that he'll get it. See, there are things that the Holy Spirit do, can do that man can't do. With the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he can intercede for you. He can help you with your infirmities. Let me give you a, a really good example um, that uh, is my, it's one of the areas that I personally have struggled with over the years is the control of your tongue, you know, the control of your mouth. And uh, it's just, you know, so easy to uh, say ugly things to people. It's so easy to respond in kind when people say things that aren't uh, appropriate. And, you know, in our business, you know, we are in an adversarial business. And uh, just constant, you know, we, I constantly run into day by day people who have zero control over their mouth whatsoever. And you can get right down with them in the dirt really quick, you know. And uh, but the Bible says that no man can tame the tongue, 
But the Holy Spirit can tame the tongue. And He can tame your tongue and help you tame your tongue. And that's what God has for you, is that your tongue would be tamed. And that you would use your tongue to bless people. And you would use your tongue to call forth those things that be not as though they were. You use your tongue to speak the word of God over yourself and your family and over other people and not be be, be meditating quick retorts and ugly things that you can say to people and, 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 and that sort of thing. So for me, I have to believe the Holy Spirit to assist me to control my tongue. And to and he will do it. He 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 does it. And I certainly by no stretch of imagination when I say that my tongue is completely under control. Because it, it is not. I can assure you it is not. However, it's a whole lot better than it could be. <laughs> because of my prayer and asking the Holy Spirit. Now, to to be able to really capture the advantages of tongues, that's what you what you want to do. Yes. In other words, because most people don't. Most people don't get it. Number one, you have to do it. You have to use it. You have to actually pray in the tongue. But you have to believe what the Word says concerning the outworking of that. In other words, if it says that you can edify yourself with tongues, you got to believe you can do it. And you got to use it in those situations and circumstances. I mean, I, I've had uh, times where, where um, uh, you know, uh, things come at you. Fear comes at you. Uh, disappointment comes at you. Discouragement comes at you. And uh, you can... Ask the Holy Spirit to intercede for you to get rid of those things because He will. That's what it says. You can do it in tongues. You can believe in God to, to, to intercede for you. That's what He said. He said that the Holy Spirit helps our infirmities and He makes intercession for us. So, what, what, I, what I think would be a, a great idea if you really wanted to further yourself in the operation of tongues, and you should want to do that is that you need to repent of not doing it enough. You need to repent of not using that gift because it's a gift. The, the Spirit calls it, the Holy Spirit calls it a gift. The Bible calls it a gift. If it's a gift, you want that gift. Right. If it's something that God had laid up for you to right. use, you want to use it, right. you want to have it. So to begin by repenting and saying, God, I, you know, I, I have the baptism or I don't have the baptism, whatever the case may be, God, I have the baptism, but I'm not using it. And I repent. I repent for not having my eyes open. See, the word says in Psalm 119, it says, open my eyes to behold wonderful things out of thy law. Well, this is one of the wonderful things. This, I assure you that this is a wonderful thing. But your eyes may not be open to that. Most people's eyes are not open to the ability to use that tongue. Because what happens is when you begin to pray in tongues, and you're praying in mysteries, he doesn't just use the, the he doesn't just use your time in praying in tongues to communicate concerning that. What you do when you begin to speak in tongues is you give him permission to begin to work for you in the realm of the spirit. What you do is to begin to work in the realm of the supernatural. What you're saying is every time you pray in tongues, it's a seat. It is a seed especially to the supernatural. See, the language of tongues is not just the entranceway to the to the spirit. It is the language of the spirit. It's the it's the uh, uh, it's God's chosen method to pray in the mysteries. It's God's chosen uh, chosen message to um, to to edify yourself and, and and those kinds of things. So what you want to do is you want to repent for not using it. You want to repent for not seeing it yes, correctly. And ask God to show you how to begin to, to use that. Uh, you know, in our uh, uh, business, and I'll give you this is a really good example. Um, when uh, in, in, in our business, what we what we do in our, our, our business, um, we haven't always done. We used to do uh, different things in our, our business. We used to... Uh, we're basically in the construction business, but we used to do a lot of different kinds of construction, all different kinds. And uh, one day, uh, I went to the dentist, and this dentist is in. He's got. He's in this office, you know. And I looked at it and I think, man, this is really a neat idea. 
you know, this is a great idea. It was the Holy Spirit quickening that idea to me as well. Because I'm a believer. I pray in tongues. I believe in God to intercede for me for my finances. I believe in God to intercede for me for my business. Ask Him. You know, God, Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede on behalf of my business. I'm asking you to intercede on behalf of my finances. Show me how to grow my finances. I, I mean, I can point to dozens of things that have happened over the years that I know was the operation of the Holy Spirit there and the Holy Spirit bringing wisdom to me. And I didn't have to be praying in, about it in tongues at that moment. But what happens is when you begin to pray in tongues, you authorize the Holy Spirit to do the things that it says that he can do. You, you, you authorize him. You, it, it, you, you, what you're doing is you're sowing a seed to the realm of the Spirit. And you're making a, a declaration that I believe your word. I believe, believe what you said. So anyway, so I, I, I go to this... Uh, a dentist one day, and, and he's got a, a really neat little setup there. And I think, boy, this is a really great idea, you know? So I called this uh, friend of mine who's an appraiser, and I asked him if he knew. I, and I asked the dentist some questions, you know, who built this for you, you know, where did you do and, and he was nice enough. And so I called this friend of mine who was an appraiser, and he said, nah, he said, you know, that's not such a good idea. He said, uh, um, he said, I, I know some people that trying to do it, man, trying to build in those offices. And they, he said that half of them lost money doing it, the other half didn't make any money. So he said, it's just not really a good idea, you know. And uh, he said, so I, 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 I wouldn't do that. And uh, so I thought, okay, well, you know, he, he was an appraiser and, and uh, he'd been in the real estate business his whole life and I knew him pretty well, so I figured, well, that, that was probably it. So I keep having these dreams, you know. Succession. A succession of dreams about that, that are contrary to what the guy said, right, right, you know? Right, right. And so I think, you know what, I need to look a little bit further because I'm having these dreams and, you know, God is saying, no, no, that's what he said wasn't so, you know? And uh, there's opportunity over here that you don't see. There's opportunity over here that's yes. is missing and uh, you don't see it. And uh, the guy was, was wrong. Basically, it was the Holy Spirit just prompting yes. me to keep looking because I had taken the word of somebody who didn't know. And, uh, and so I thought, oh, no, 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 a little bit further, you know. So we look, I look a little bit further and I realize, huh, the guy was wrong, you know. And uh, this is not a, this is, can be a pretty good thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy was wrong, you know. Well, it was the Holy Spirit prompting me through dreams. Because I pray about my finances, because we're believing God over our, our, our finances. We had a, uh, a, a property one time that uh, we, we, we bought this office building. And it was an old, old building, it's kind of old, decrepit building, you know. And uh, the reason, I, and, and I bought it at auction, and the reason I bought it was because uh, it was a great location. It was a fantastic location. It was just a crummy building in a fantastic location. And uh, uh, so we we had we had just heard about um, first fruits, right. and so we took of the first of the money that came on that. We got some money at the, at the closing. Actually, there was some money laid up in escrow. We were able to get that at the closing. So we sowed that as a first fruits offering, yes. and then we took our children. The children were all about this big at the time. Just so the boys. Uh, just the boys. it was just the boys. They only had girls at the time. Well, we went down to the property, we walked over the property, and prayed over it, and so forth, dedicated it to the Lord. In other words, we're inviting the Holy Ghost. Now we're praying in tongues. We're inviting the Holy Ghost. Listen, we need you to show us what to do with yes. this property. We need you to help us build this property. And that's what happened. We're inviting the Holy Ghost to help us in that situation. And, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a, a, again, it was just a rundown old property. Oh my gosh, the property exploded, just exploded. And uh, we made millions and millions of dollars off this old, decrepit, run-down piece of property, you know. And, uh, but the Holy Spirit had led us to this, had led us to this uh, particular property. And then as we walked over it, and as we prayed in tongues over it, we're inviting the presence of the Holy Spirit to intercede for us, to show us, how can we make that thing work? How can we make it profitable? 
how can we make it, it, it uh, uh, grow? And so back to you know what we that was a, that was a different situation, but back to what, what we do now. That's exactly what happened in the business that we're in now. We invited the Holy Ghost through praying in tongues and at inviting the Holy Ghost to intercede for us. Show us how to make this work. You know? Show us how to 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 prosper in in what we're doing yes. here. And the Lord would give us dreams, you know, he gave us dreams. Buy this. Don't buy that. There have been times where uh, and it, it just happened it, it just happened recently, you know, there are times where you know we were we were working on the property, we just didn't get it. And we realized it was the protection of God. Yes. You know, that we didn't get there have been a lot of properties. There's, there's properties all over this town that we drive around and the Gail says, Boy, I'm glad we didn't get that. Thank you, God, that we didn't get that property. Because <laughs> the natural man would look at it. And the natural man say, hey, that's a good deal. We'll make some money there. But the Spirit knew. Right. You know, the right. Spirit of God right. who intercedes Amen. for us Amen. knew that's not always such a good thing. And, and maybe you better just, you better just uh, 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 stay away from that thing. So the use of tongues in that situation, what it does is it invites the Spirit. It invites the presence of the Holy Spirit. And when you use the language of the Spirit and you begin to pray in the language of the Spirit, it engages the Holy Ghost in a way that nothing else does. What he's hearing you say is, I believe you. I believe your work. I believe that you're capable of doing things in the supernatural realm that I can't do myself. And that's, I, I tell you, if there's one extraordinary power behind praying in tongues over your business, that's it. That you want to invite him to show you what you don't know. There's a, a verse in uh, uh, Job, I think it's uh, 34, 32, I think it is. It says, um, uh, that which I see not, teach thou me. That which I see not. That is, is, every businessman ought to be praying that prayer. You know? That which I see not, teach thou me. And to pray in tongues, to believe God. For the Holy Spirit to be able to show you those things, what happens is you activate the most incredible Amen. power on the face of the earth. Amen. You know, you activate the power of the Holy Ghost because there's nothing the Holy Ghost doesn't see. Yes. There's nothing He doesn't know. There's nothing He can't show you. You know, but if you're blocked to those things or you're closed off to those things, then He's not going to show them to you. But when you begin to pray in tongues over it, the Holy Spirit begins to help your infirmities. And he begins to intercede for you Amen. with sighs and groanings too great for words. Amen. Well, that's really good, Brother Kevin. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking about what happened today. Huh? I'm just thinking about what happened today. Oh, gosh, I think what happened today. Uh, I was praying for somebody this afternoon. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, no, that's exactly. See, God, God is full of sad. He's got all these situations he can set you up in, and, and you don't know what they are. So you want to pray in tongues because you want to pray in the mysteries. Because by definition, you don't know what the mystery is. By definition, it's going to take you praying in tongues to get to the mystery. It's, it, it's the hidden power. It's the, un, it's the un, unseen gift, the unseen power that people don't get because they don't believe that it's there. To just pray. I remember the uh, the Lord spoke to me about uh, uh, this friend of mine was telling me his his, uh, 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 his pastor uh, prayed in tongues for I think it was an hour a day, something like that. You know? and, uh, and and he said, uh, it might have even been two hours a day. Anyway. But he was telling me his pastor prayed in, in tongues for, for two hours a day, and. Um, he had a stopwatch, and he would start to watch it two hours, and you know, he would, you know, because you, invariably you get interrupted. You got to stop here, you got to stop here. So he would run that until that watch was done for the two hours. You know? So I thought, well, you know what? I'm, I'm, the Lord really spoke to me about trying to spend more time praying in time. So I said, all right, I'm going to start trying an hour a day. Let me, let me try an hour a day, you know, and just constant interruption. You know, and I went before the Lord and I said, Lord, I'm having a tough time with this because 
there's constant interruptions and finding the phone rings and this happens the dog barks or you know the, the kinds of situations and uh, uh, anyway because I told my friend uh, uh, you know I said it seems kind of I don't know about that it seems like kind of hokey to use a stopwatch you know and uh, so you know I, and I'm saying, saying Lord I'm just I'm having trouble because I keep getting interrupted and this happens and I said can't do it and I don't know exactly how to stay on target. Well, so why don't you get your stopwatch? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I did not try that for a while. Uh, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> How's that working? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, we all start somewhere. We all start somewhere. And, and the truth it. is that you, 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 you think, well, oh, gee, I can... Let's, I, I, I was listening to Kenneth. It's not Mary. a religious exercise you're doing. There's an expectation no, no, there's that you are going to get something. something that's is, why you're going to spend time yeah, praying that's why you're in the it. spirit. And it's you're not setting up time to do something more. to do. You know, right. It's, right. You've got an expectation. I heard Kenneth Hagin tell a lot of one time, the first time he ever prayed in tongues for an hour, he said that uh, that he determined he was going to pray in tongues for an hour. So he said, start praying, start praying. And time is dragging on and he's. He's going on and on. He said, finally, man, I've been here a long time. The hour's got to be up. He said, look at this watch. It's been 10 minutes, you know. And because uh, <laughs> that is kind of how it works, you know. It's, uh, you, you think time's going faster than, uh, than it could work. And I'm not saying, you know, I heard Gloria Copeland say that, that she prayed in tongues for an hour a day for, for a while. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. You should or you, you, you shouldn't do it. Maybe it works for you, and maybe it doesn't work for you. But however you do it, you want to be praying in tongues. Whether Whatever works for you and whatever God quickens to you, uh, because you want the Holy Spirit interceding for you. You need Him to be interceding for you. And you want Him to, to help you with your infirmities. You want Him to intercede for you. You want Him to give you wisdom and direction and, and uh, strength. You want him to edify you and to build build yourself up. All of those things happen when you begin to uh, to pray in tongues. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. The more you do it, the more you understand what's happening there. You know, one of the things that uh, um, that the Lord has has spoken to us over the years, many many times in dreams and visions. And sometimes we'll wake up and we don't got a clue what that dream was. You know, I mean, what the heck was that? You know, and uh, the 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 we begin to pray in tongues. That's that's the answer. You begin to pray in tongues because that dream is a communication from God. It's a mystery, but I can pray for the revelation of the mysteries. I can pray the, those those mysteries. Anyway, my purpose tonight was just to encourage you: revisit that, revisit, and no matter how much you do it, revisit it. Go back and take another look. Repent for not doing it enough. Repent for not looking and seeing all the reasons to do it and to not believe what the Word says. You know, that's a, the, the reality of most of Christianity. Anyways, they don't believe what the God said. They don't believe what the Word said. But I, I just I encourage you, go back, revisit that. Say, you know, God, let, let me take another look. Can you speak to me about this, God? You, if you, if this is something you have for me to spend more time doing Speak to me about it so that I can uh, I can do it. You, it's, it's, it's there's a reward. Any time you pursue anything that we're told to do in the Word, there's a reward that's on it. There's something on it. There's something on the other side of obedience uh, every time. This particular one is is hidden. Uh, this particular one is something that's not readily apparent, and uh, you got to get there. You got you just got to make a decision. That if God said these things are going to happen, then they're going to happen. And I'm going to pray in faith, believing that I'm going to get what his word said he's going to get. Anyway, praise God. Do you have anything to add, Princess? Tell her. Sit you for that story. I was in a prayer meeting this morning early with, with Ron, and we went to a prayer meeting, and then we got the opportunity to go to the nursing home. So I talked to them about prayer talking to the people at the nursing home about prayer. And so this afternoon, I, ha I happened to have a, a talk to a friend on, on the phone. And, uh, 
as I was talking to her, all of a sudden, the spirit of intercession came on me. And there is a spirit of intercession that it's as the spirit wills. And I mean, uh, it came on me wave after the groanings and the travail and the, uh, praying the mysteries because there were some things that God had laid up for this person that I, when I started to talk to her, all of a sudden, it was not me. It was the Holy Spirit just praying through. And I mean, I just, a wave and after wave of, and I had to, I was trying to collect myself, but then the Holy Spirit would have me intercede again. And, and so as you get, yield yourself to the Holy Spirit in prayer, as you start to pray for others and you start to, you know, like, kind of this today was just a, a day of prayer. We started with a prayer there and then, you know, and uh, I didn't expect it. And it's not and, and when that's the spirit of intercession comes on you, you can't make it. You can't contrive it. It's not by the flesh. I mean, we begin in the natural to pray in the Holy Spirit, but then there are times what like in an emergency or in some situation that you tap into, which is what happens today, he allows you, he, he allows us to let, he allow, he prays through us the, the, the answer for this person. And I, oh, I tell you, I know I'm going to pick it up again because there's something that God wants to do in this person's life that is so amazing. And I picked up on it in the spirit and I get to agree with the Holy Spirit for the fulfillment of it. Amen. Isn't that wonderful that we get to partner with the Holy Spirit and seeing God do supernatural things in people's lives. And I, I just, I know that God has some great things for this woman and some new situations and and I'm so grateful. I have a lot of experiences that God's given me. We're going to have a, a conference of, in this new year in, on prayer. And I'm going to, one of my one of my parts is going to talk about the diversity of tongues and and how you in just different ways that as you pray the mysteries, God will meet you and and show you supernatural things. And I'm going to give some stories about that. I mean, we're going to have all kinds of prayer. People talking about all kinds of different aspects of prayer. But that I know I'm going to be sharing on since the Lord said that to me today. So um, anyway, but it, be encouraged. Wherever you start, just start. You know, just start where you, where you are. Just begin. If it's, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, pay, I'm going to pray in tongues to work. I'm just going to spend the 15 minutes in the car. Uh, I'm just going to pray in tongues. That's, if that's it, if that's, if that's where you need to start. Just make a place in your mind or set it yourself aside a time that you're going to start to pray. And it's maybe 15 minutes is too much for you. Start with five. Amen. Amen. But I, you will see, you will be built up. You will see it quickly. God will show up for you. And, and so we just thank you, Lord, for just this. this I mean, Father, it took me a while to get it because I grew up in the Presbyterian church and we didn't, you know, we didn't talk about, they didn't talk about it. And, and all the people that did do that, they thought were nuts. And, and so it took me, you know, uh, but Pastor Kevin, before we were married, he, he knew the Holy Spirit. He was the only person I ever met that never had a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And, and so I desired it. And uh, so he was one that, that encouraged me about receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We can't talk about it enough. It has changed our lives, the, the Spirit of the, the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we're not ashamed of it. Amen. Thank you for being with us. Is there anything else that you want to say? We thank you. Thank you for Pastor Rhonda, for Sister Evangelist Rhonda, mighty woman of God, Rhonda, for taking me to set this this uh, today over to Plant City. And we thank you for being with us, and we pray that you have a great week. God bless you, and we'll see you Sunday.